In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a handheld shake to your videos as well as a camcorder or VHS style overlay if you want it as well. So to begin, I'm going to start a new composition from footage and I'm going to select the footage that I want and that's just going to make a composition in the size of that footage. And this is the video clip right now. It's more like a stationary tripod shot and we're going to add some motion to that. So in order to do that, I'm going to drop down the transform options for this layer and I'm going to hold option and click on this stopwatch icon of the position. So this is going to allow us to add a expression on the position and the expression that we'll use, we'll just actually click this play button here. This will give us a drop down menu of a bunch of different preset templates of expressions and I will click the wiggle expression. Now here you have options to adjust the frequency, amplitude and more. So all we have to do is add a frequency. So let's say one and then add an amplitude. So let's say 20. And if I press play on that, we see we get a little bit of slight motion. Here's where you want to play around and adjust it to your liking. So if one is too slow, maybe you could try two and you could just see what feels natural to you. Now, as you can see, we're, we're getting a little bit of black bordering here because we are moving the video frame around. So to solve that, you just want to bump the scale up a few percent, uh, depending on how strong of an amplitude you used, you can use five or more percent. You just want to make sure that it's never wiggling outside of that frame. So now we've added a little bit of a handheld shake and the next sort of optional step you have is if we want to do that uh, VHS camcorder style overlay. So to do that, you could find some kind of free graphic overlay on Google or something, but because in the name of creativity, let's go to file new Adobe Photoshop file and you could choose where you want this document to save. But once you press save, it'll actually just open Photoshop up for you and allow you to adjust this new document. So because it comes neatly with these video guides in place, I'm just going to grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'll grab a selection here of a rectangle. It sort of snaps to the selection automatically. And that's because inside the view menu, we have snap turned on. And if you ever want to hide or show these, you can press command H or inside the view, you can turn extras off. But on this layer, I'm going to right click stroke. I'm just going to create a white stroke of about 10 pixels is fine. And I will right click and deselect that. And now I can also just delete everything but the corners. There's many ways to do this. If you want just a rough idea, you can grab a big selection from the top, uh, eyeball another selection from the side, and then just press delete. That gives you a clean four corners. If you really wanted them all to be symmetrical, I suppose I could hold shift and grab a selection from the corner. That gives us a one by one ratio selection, so a square. I could right click layer via copy and then hide the original layer and then just duplicate this layer and move it and edit, transform, flip it horizontal and vertical. So I'm holding shift to keep things aligned. I could merge those together, press command J to duplicate them, edit, transform, flip vertical, and then put them on the bottom corner. That's if you wanted perfectly even lines, I guess. Then I'm going to add a little red dot. You could use the circle tool. I could even get away with using the brush tool on 100% hardness and adding a little record icon. I'm pressing the right bracket key as a quick shortcut to increase or decrease size. And I'll make a little red circle. And then I will type out REC for record. Uh, you could find some cool VCR font on a free font website or something. Um, but this is the basic idea. I will actually make the record white. And once I close Photoshop and just press save, you'll see it automatically adds this Photoshop document into the After Effects file and I can click and drag it on a layer on top of our video. And I could even lower the opacity of this a little bit. So maybe put it on 80%. I could even right click and put it on a blending mode. So maybe overlay or something like that. 
but I'll just keep it on normal at a lower opacity. And the other little touches I added were on the video clip. You could add some noise, so noise HLS auto. Make sure I'm clicking and dragging it onto the video clip. And I can add some noise if I wanted to go for that more grainy look. And I can even play around with glitchy effects like wave warp on this video clip and try something like noise here as well. Maybe I'll increase the wave width a lot, like 20,000, and uh, I'll change the direction to 180 degrees. And you can get these cool glitches. You can adjust the speed, so maybe I'll make it really slow. You could play around with different settings if you're going for this more glitchy look. That's totally not necessary to do the handheld animation portion. That was just a wiggle effect. And even if you want to be extra and make the red circle blink, technically you could make it on a different layer in graphic in Photoshop, or you could just add that part completely in After Effects using a shape tool. But I'll do it a complicated way of grabbing my ellipse tool, using it as a mask, and then duplicating this layer. So on the bottom layer, we have the mask set to add. On the top layer, we'll have the mask set to subtract. So essentially, we've just separated the circle from the rest of it. And on the layer that we've separated the circle, we can just add a strobe light effect. So I'll click and add that strobe light effect on. Make sure it goes to make layer transparent. And then we can make it strobe on half a second every one second or whatever settings you want. Or you could make the whole text blink, not just the red light. But those are all little extra steps I'm just doing for fun. Maybe it can show you some tools or different effects, give you some ideas for any kind of project. But in general, this has been how to go for a handheld camcorder look in Adobe After Effects and a bunch of different options you can use, as well as creating graphics in Photoshop to go into your After Effects project. My name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out dozens of more in the After Effects playlist on my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.